two things I'm going to say before I start this video. One, I had an awesome, awesome, awesome time at BookNet Fest, even though I cried, so I had a great time. Two, only one of those were happy cries. I know it seems kind of clickbaity in your life. She must have cried because she was happy. Only cried because I was happy once. Other time was not a happy cry. So with that said, let's start the vlog. I don't think I can use this pool, um, but like it's there. I can't swim anyway. Um, this is the room. There's a TV, a mirror, fan, double or queen bed. And this was, I didn't realize from the Airbnb listing, but I have an ensuite bathroom, which is awesome. I was not expecting that at all. So I have this bathroom to myself and look at this full like mirror i can be one of those vloggers that like does those outfit of the day things or whatever i'm walking out to go to the wendy's right now and grab some food and then come back in my room and chill there and just enjoy time until uh until it's time for the speaker dinner which is happening later at 7 p.m back from the dinner. Um, I'm in the bathroom of my Airbnb because the lighting here is much better. For whatever reason, my Airbnb bedroom doesn't have like a ceiling light. So it's super, super dark in there, but the lighting in here is great. <laughs> so I'm in the bathroom. Um, dinner was nice. It was really good to like get to know people and like talk to people face to face that I've just kind of seen in videos <laughs> and never actually talked with. Um, that was really cool and really uh, nice. Sometimes I like feel like I hesitate to talk about this stuff because I'm like, do I need to let everybody in on my weird brain stuff? And is this going to make me seem like I'm like a sad, pathetic person? But it's kind of part of how I experience book events and things like that where I go away. And so I think it's kind of like, I was going to chat about it a bit. So I'm staying in Airbnb. The reason I'm staying in the Airbnb is because it causes me a lot of panic um and like just like I feel very stressed about the idea of asking someone to room with me because then there's a possibility they could say no and the idea of that rejection causes me like like I would rather just be alone than like risk rejection and if it's people I know really well I don't mind asking that stuff because I don't expect that they're gonna say no. Um, so then I don't have that like panic. Um, but for this conference, I didn't really know anyone well enough to feel like that. Um, and I was shorter notice, so like time pressure was also pushing on me. So then I decided to stay in an Airbnb. Um, I think like all of the speakers, except for ones that live in Orlando, are actually staying at the hotel. Um, so like, in some ways, like I kind of wish I was at the hotel because then I would have been around everyone. But like to stay at the hotel with someone else is very affordable. To stay at the hotel by yourself is very, very expensive. Um, and because I'd had that panic, um, I had to stay at the Airbnb. Um, and then, and this happened at BookCon too. Like at BookCon, I felt too stressed to ask anyone. And I, I just like felt too stressed to ask someone to stay with them. And so I also ended up staying in Airbnb alone for BookCon. Um, and so at the end of the dinner, like people were kind of going off to do their own thing. And internally, I like wished that I would like 
go with someone and like maybe get to know people a bit more. Um, I would have liked to... I'd like to be the sort of person that would say to someone, hey, do you want to go do this now? Or that would see other people going to do something and be like, hey, do you mind if I come along? Um, but I'm really not. Um, it's the same sort of like stressor thing. I really can't ask people that because I, if they said no, I know I would feel really upset and I'd be really upset for a long time. Even though it's like well within everybody, nobody has to say yes to everyone. Um, but for me, like that causes me a lot of stress. So then I'm just like home now. <laughs> I'm just like at the Airbnb now, um, which I'm not like, I'm not emo about it. Like I'm not sitting in this Airbnb crying to myself. Crying to myself? Guess who said who they weren't alone in their room crying, but then did cry. Um, I was just really, I'm just really frustrated with myself. And that's kind of what it is. I like, I wish I could be different in some ways and I'm really not yet. And I think that's kind of a learning and growing process, but I also think I have to decide what I want to expend my energy on. And uh, yeah, I think that frustration just like, it built up, it built up. <laughs> And I was like, I'm not over here crying. And almost directly after filming that, just like burst into tears. So um, it's really fine. <laughs> I'm hoping that everything else will be fine and I'll kind of work through whatever is going on in my head and like have a good rest of the conference. Because the conference has been itself has been great. It hasn't started yet, but I was like, everything pre-conference has been great. Um... I guess my brain, like, the situation has caused me to have to work through some things that are kind of difficult. And I guess I could not film it and I could not talk about it, but I think, like, part of... It's kind of important to have that transparency because I think you never know who that would have helped to see that. Um, I could just film, like... Booknet fest uh, vlog and like never talk about the fact that I cried alone in my Airbnb because I was frustrated with my social uh, stressors. Um, but I think some people do have trouble at conferences, so I don't know. Maybe this will be illuminating. It's the next day. I'm heading over to the conference now. Um, I'm like a half hour walk away or a five minute Uber, but I didn't feel like paying uber <laughs> this morning um so i'm gonna walk I ended up leaving a bit later than i wanted to because i was trying to make my hair work by putting it into the fake ponytail and i couldn't do it so regular ponytail it is i'm feeling a lot better i know uh yesterday was very emotional but uh today i'm feeling a lot better i'm feeling a little more uh seize the day so uh yeah see you there So these lovely ladies are here just to discuss uh, reading and escapism and self-care and everything kind of about reading in our current times. So now let them introduce themselves. I am Sam from Thoughts on Tones. Hello everyone. I'm Oshale from Oshi Reads. And I'm India from Life is a Page Turner. And I'm Jess, formerly from Jess Reads Books, but I decided to change it to Jess over the last two weeks before you <laughs> And we're getting ready to do the author two panel. We're basically just sitting there. There's Lindsay. There's Allison and Lady and Alexa. And yeah, we're just waiting now. So at some point. Yeah, I did the panel.
panel that was really good. Um, it was nice because it wasn't like a huge amount of people. Um, so then when I looked out, it felt really approachable. I wasn't like nervous or anything like that, which I was very surprised by. Um, it was just like a cool conversation. It was really nice to have that conversation and be on the panel. Super exciting. Um, and then I went to two panels today. I went to Writing the Year of Our Lord 2019, and that was talking about books and like escapism. And that was really cool. Um, I like personally, like, I guess, I, no, I don't really write for escape. I don't read for escapism. I just read for entertainment. So it was interesting to hear that perspective from people because if you're reading for escapism, like they talked about how like they couldn't really read issue books because it wasn't an escape anymore. It was like too real. And that was a really interesting perspective. Um, what else did I go to? I went to um, vlogging like a filmmaker. I went to that panel. Well, it was a workshop actually. I snuck my way in. <laughs> um, and that was really cool. It was like cool to hear the different shot styles and like how you can set things up. Um, something I learned was like switching, like cutting when you're in movement instead of cutting when you're static so that it's not so um, jarring, which is like something I'll definitely employ. And then afterwards I felt very inspired. So I took a bunch of like B-roll footage. Um, I'm moving because I'm crouched and my legs are weak and so it's making me sore. But yeah, that was, and then we went to, I went to the writer meetup that was hosted by Alexa and Lainey. And that was super fun. Like there were so many people, there were so many writers and everybody talked about everything they had been writing and their process and like what they were working on. And that was like really fun. Like I love hearing about writers, different ideas and stuff and their process and kind of just being around other writers. So that was like a really awesome meetup. So that finished and then I came straight back to my Airbnb. I was gonna go to the restaurant nearby so that I could get like a giant pina colada, like a frozen cocktail. But then I remember that I have leftover pasta and Cheetos in my uh, Airbnb. And then I was kind of like, I might just might have that. And then like, if I still want a treat after, I'll go to like the 7-Eleven, I'll get a slushy or something. Cause whatever, I feel lazy. And then tomorrow we have the prom anyway. So I know I'm going to be there like late, probably drinking. So it's probably better to save my drinking day for tomorrow than to like drink now. So that's the whole day. And um, yeah, I'm in a much better mood today. And this always happens to me. Oh my God, I need to adjust. My legs are dying. <laughs> This always happens to me where I like get so in my head about this social stuff and then the next day I'm 100% fine in the same situation and then I like feel silly about how I was the other day. Like definitely there was part of me that wanted to be like, okay, let's just delete all that footage that we took yesterday <laughs> where we talked about our social anxieties and we like our social stressors. I don't have a diagnosis of anxiety. I should probably get that checked out. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, talking about my social stressors and like all this stuff and like cry. And I was very tempted to just like pretend it never happened and just move on to this moment. But again, I like, transparency I think it's important and also because when I've been at this conference I have like kind of talked with several several people about like weird social stressor things I have because people have been like oh why aren't you staying at the hotel and I like explain <laughs> the stress uh involved in finding a roommate that kind of led me to be at an Airbnb um so I like I guess I feel like this is like a a more clear picture of my entire conference experience and like to cut it out really would be kind of shadowing a part of it that I think should be shown in some ways because I honestly never really see people talk about things like this and I don't think that's because I'm the only one so that was the first official day of the conference we also got such a cute cookie it was so nice I really ate I ate it it was so delicious so yeah now I'm gonna hang around and I don't know what I'm gonna do with my free time I feel like Kate Kavanaugh doing this shot. Oh shit. <laughs> Do you 
just as smooth as Kate would have done it. I'm in the bathroom again. Last time, yesterday I didn't do any sort of like outfit of the day, but this time I am. So this is what I'm wearing. And I did my hair differently today. This is the first time I'm trying out this hairstyle, but I really like it. And it was really easy to do. And it's great because um, I don't have any of my like usual products or anything like that with me. Um, Cause I was traveling and like liquid limits. So yeah. consumerism panel. There's Paige so, and oh, Mark. Shit, sorry. 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 There's Paige again. No, <laughs> um, yeah. and, hold on. It's going to flip. There we go. And there we go. And we're going to start. Waiting for my Airbnb, my Airbnb, my uh, Uber. <laughs> uh, gonna go to the uh, Booknet Fest prom now. You can't really see. This is my outfit. I wish I had done like a better outfit. I'll do like, I'll put pictures in or something. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, yeah, so it's like this is their first time putting on a prom. Um, I'm not a big dancer, <laughs> uh, but we'll see. We'll see what happens when the. Uh, Drinks start flowing. Maybe I will suddenly be hit with a fever to dance, though I don't expect that I will be. Um, yeah, so that was I, the second day. All the panels were really great. I did the books and consumerism panel, which was went really well. Um, I was kind of like worried about it since I'm not a booktuber, but I am like a very like dedicated minimalist when it comes to books so I had a lot to speak on in that realm I thought my uber was here it's still two minutes away <laughs> yeah so the panels were really good um, there were a lot of like poignant topics brought up um, one especially like uh, India from life as a per life as a page turner um, she talked about the struggles of black and people of color um, 
breaking out on the platforms on YouTube um, and how it is often harder to be recognized on the platform when you're a black or PRC creator. Um, so I think that was something that was definitely like an, uncomf an uncomfortable topic, but something that does need to be discussed. Um, I think a lot of us have internal biases that make it kind of, you know, we're flipping through creators and in our head we're just finding people that we think are creating great content, but it can be easy to get into a rhythm where the people you're following are actually like very homogeneous, like they aren't um, a diverse group of people. And so that's why I always try and like purposely look for marginalized creators. And I honestly really encourage people to, it's kind of the same thing that happened with diverse books. Like we had to actively look for diverse authors for a while before it kind of became more of a normal process to just seek out those books. So yeah, I definitely encourage that and I encourage you to check out India's channel. I'm gonna link her channel and I'm gonna link a bunch of like, book bloggers and author tubers that I interacted with at BookNet Fest. Yeah, so once my Uber comes, I'll be off to the <laughs> We're bringing up the rear. Welcome to my bathroom. I am hungover. <laughs> uh, yeah, I had a great time at the prom. It was super fun. Uh, did a lot of dancing, took some photo booth photos. Maybe I'll throw some of those up here. Um, yeah, and that's the end of BookNet Fest. Um, I had a really good time. Um, honestly, I think <laughs> Uh, because of things that happened, aka my little mini uh, breakdown thing, um, that really didn't deter my experience of the uh, conference. I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of new people. I've like made some connections and like friends that I'm like going to continue to talk to. It was just really positive overall. Sam and Marinas are amazing organizers. Um, they did such a good job. Um, I can't even fathom the idea of running a full conference. So it was really awesome. If you ever have like the financial and like time ability to come out to Orlando for a BookNet Fest, I would highly recommend it. Um, it was really just a fun time and like a relaxing time. Um, there wasn't anything like panicking and they did a lot of great things as organizers that were appreciated. Like they had on their badges, they had pronouns so you could put your pronouns. And I just had a really good time. Uh, yeah, so if you liked this vlog, please give me a thumbs up. Um, if you aren't subscribed to me already, please subscribe to me. Um, I met a ton of amazing people. I'm gonna link all of them in the description so that you can check them out too. And thanks so much for watching and joining me on this very transparent journey. Bye.